Are you ready for a lot of AMD news today? Because we got things about Zen 4, Zen 5, ARM stuff, at least a suit talking to press. It's a heckin' ton of AMD stuff. We also got details of potentially a next generation of Windows, as well as quantum drums. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the very here interwebs. And in case you wanna submit some tech news that you want me to cover in hot news, you can do so over at our Discord server, which is linked in the video description. Now let's jumpity jump, jump on in to the fact that AMD's new Zen 4 CPU, which we talked about in a couple days ago in a hot news episode about how they're switching to LGA instead of PGA for where they put the pins on the socket and not on the actual chip. Well, we now have an apparent render of those Zen 4 chips with some more details coming alongside that. So this is coming from the same leaker executable fix showing off the picture of the AM5 Raphael CPU pads, also providing some more details, such as the fact that it will be DDR5, not DDR4, which is something that we assumed, 28 PCI Express 4.0 lanes, which is more than Zen 3, as well as 120 watt TDP, which is higher than the current Zen 3 chips, but also noting that it could go up to 170 watts, which would be a massive increase over what AMD currently has. Also, its video cards provided this documentation to show the AMD Raphael CPU against the Alder Lake CPU that were expected to come out sometime soon. And you can see, even though that the AMD CPU has more pins, it's done in a more shrunken form factor because it doesn't have the capacitors and everything built in on the backside. So the stack up between Zen 4 and Alder Lake is gonna come down to a few things, such as the fact that Zen 4 could support up to potentially 24 cores. It's only gonna be DDR5, whereas Alder Lake will have support for DDR4 and 5, and Alder Lake will also have PCI Express 5.0, whereas Zen 4 will only have 4.0, but the maximum TDP of that 170 watts is something that we should keep our eyes on, especially if they produce a 24 core chip that runs at high frequencies with the Zen 4 IPC increase, which we're gonna talk about in a second because we got some more Zen 4, Zen 5 details, well, this could be a huge increase for AMD. Let me know what you're thinking about Zen 4 down below in the comments. And I'm telling you what I think about today's episode sponsor of Hot News Drop and their Enter Keyboard. My friends, you might be looking to get into the mechanical keyboard game, all right? You should definitely look at the Enter for that because number one, it's affordable. The price is only 90 bucks and it ships immediately with international shipping. It's the perfect introduction to mechanical keyboards because it's aesthetically pleasing with the choice of black, green, or white, but it also has the aluminum backplate, which adds heft and girth to it, but makes it feel different than all the other plastic competitors that are out there, especially in this budget price point. You have adjustable LED backlighting that isn't gamer RGB as well as premium functionality. And you have selection between the Gateron Yellow for smooth typing experience on the key switches or Halo True for that tactile clicky typing experience. And the key caps are made from double shot PBT, meaning that they'll never fade or scratch off. And you can also customize how your enter looks by picking up the myriad of key caps that Drop has on their website. And you can just customize it to whatever look you want. And Drop believes that trying is believable Leaving, so they have a generous 30 day, no questions asked return process. But I think you're going to love it. Check out Drop and their Enter Mechanical Keyboard at the link in the video description. This thing is solid, it's affordable, and it types really nice like a keyboard should. And you don't have to have deal with all the other gamer stuff or 10 keys, it's great. Big thanks to Drop for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. Now let's get into more AMD details because there are a ton to go through. This is coming out from another well-known leaker discussing Zen 4 and its upcoming coming improvements as well as Zen 5. There's some indication that Zen 4 might be 29% faster than the current generation Zen 3, which would put it in a class tier giant stack volume of being fast. Good words, Brett good at conveying information to the people. But also saying with regards to Zen 5, it is a pure slafter house. And now we have some more details about AMD stacking their chips with their next generation Epic chips in Milan X process. X3D packaging technology is what it's gonna be called. AMD has previously mentioned that they were looking into this technology, but now it should potentially be rolling out in hybrid 2.5 and 3D stacking on their chips. However, the thing to note is that this likely won't be used to increase core count where you're just stacking CPU cores on CPU cores on CPU cores, and then you have a thousand core Epic monster. No, this is likely gonna be used 
increases for bandwidth and throughput as opposed to just increasing the core count because if you can stack more on one side you can reduce latency and reduce the cross communication time that everything's happening which is what latency is good job for explaining that brett well microsoft's explaining to us that they have a new version new generation of Windows coming very soon, or the announcement of it's coming soon, rather. Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, saying that he's been self-hosting the build over the past several months, and he's incredibly excited about the next generation of Windows. Whether or not this is gonna be a new skin for Windows 10, which is just gonna be our perennial, never-changing operating system, or it's gonna be a brand new edition that's not Windows 10, it's hard to say, but we'll have more details very soon. And you want a 3080 Ti, 3070 Ti very soon? Well, uh, stock issues, I can't necessarily comment on that, but Asus has you covered as far as the sheer volume of options you get because they've put in 111 new filings at the EEC for their 3070 and 3080 Ti variants. 111! Look at these bad boys! That is a lot of chips. Lead Tech also had their WinFast Hurricane picture. Look at that 3080 Ti. It just looks like a graphics card. Yum, yum. That's what people are saying about the Portal movie. Nobody's saying that. J.J. Abrams is going to be involved with it. And after what he do with Star Wars, yikes. Anyways, uh, apparently it's finally on the rails, even though back in 2013, he said it was as real as anything gets in Hollywood, which it's been, it's been eight years. Are we getting it? Who knows? Nobody. But we are getting some gameplay of Horizon Forbidden West this coming Thursday with Sony saying that they're bringing it back their state of play Thursday, May 27th with the gameplay coming out at 5 p.m. Eastern time. You should stay tuned for more of that. One of my favorite games on PlayStation 4 now on PC on Steam. I believe you should absolutely play it if you're into single player RPG open world post apocalyptic dinosaur fighting games because it's great. Speaking of the post apocalypse, let's get into the GameStop crypto Bitcoin thing that I do here on this channel where we talk about all of the crypto things that are going wrong. Bitcoin down 3.7%. And this is after, I mean, look at this headline right over here. Bitcoin jumps after Elon Musk talks about spearheading a green mining initiative. Uh, yeah, well, it might have gone up, but it went back down because that's how Bitcoin works. Anyways, uh, Elon Musk did confer with the Bitcoin Mining Council, as they're just calling themselves. Uh, and they're looking at potentially promoting energy usage, transparency, and accelerating sustainability initiatives worldwide. This is one of the key criticisms that comes up with regards to proof of work algorithms that they use a ton of energy with people saying, hey, that should be renewable. But then other people saying, hey, even if it's renewable, you're still using a ton of resources that could go somewhere else. And this doesn't need to exist because we already got payment processing stuff. And blockchain is good for like internal validation at banks, but it's not good for a worldwide currency because we already have something like that. Which side are you on? Let me know in the comments. Ethereum also down 2.5%. Dogecoin down 5.72%. And Chia's not down. I don't know the price. We're not going to talk about the Chia price, but we're going to talk about how it's up in the amount of storage. 10 exabytes of storage being just consumed by this gosh dang thing. You thought a petabyte was a lot. No, no, no. Exabytes being taken by Chia. But the people behind Chia are saying, hey, stop complaining about your SSDs failing because you're not supposed to be using consumer SSDs. You wouldn't be having this problem if you weren't dumb enough to use it, all right? It's like using a fork with a bowl of soup. It just doesn't, you're, you're gonna get something, but it's not gonna make any sense and eventually you're gonna get frustrated and give up, which is exactly what the SSD does. Anyways, let's close out this segment by talking about GameStop. Game stunk of 16% over $200 again, yeah. Let's go, that's that's what I'm looking at. It says right down here, bearish pattern detected, bull crap. Okay, bull crap, because it's a bull pattern. Phew. Goes game stuff. And phew, is what quantum drums sound like in my imagination, because we now have those quantum drums that are linked by quantum entanglement where you can vibrate one and it vibrates the other in the opposite direction where they're quantum entangled and you can use that for quantum science and quantum computing and it only lasts for 200 microseconds, but that's enough for them to store it in the quantum qubit and make it so that they can do fun stuff like beat on the bongos like Donkey Kong. But arms beating on the bongos of advancing the human civilization 
innovation with more powerful computers by talking about their first new architecture in a very long time. ARM V9 has now been unveiled by ARM with them having enhancements all over the place from the little cores that are gonna be up 35% in performance, 20% in energy efficiency, and three times in machine learning, as well as the big cores, which are gonna be up 10% of performance, 30% in energy efficiency, and double in machine learning, as well as the latest flagship CPU for ultimate performance of 16%, which I'm also saying that this isn't just going to be for things like smartphones. This is also going to be an all-in-one solution that could even scale up to laptops. So ARM coming to your computer sometime soon, as long as you're not already on Mac, where that's already happened, but also big developments into the GPU architecture that they're developing for it, up to a 22% energy savings on that for longer battery life, 100% increase in machine learning, 100% performance boost on certain aspects of it. The highest performing GPU is getting 20% performance improvements, 20% power energy efficiency, and 35% machine learning uplift. ARM's just having a good time. And Qualcomm wants to get in on that good time by releasing a Snapdragon developer kit for Windows 10 on ARM, where you're gonna be able to build apps on the ARM device that's right here, essentially trying to bring over to Windows what Apple has succeeded with on their Mac mini with Rosetta and the transition developer kit that they had previously. Qualcomm trying to get in on that, but ARM don't want to get in on paying their people or hiring more people. Even though they're seeing record revenue, it's a great time. They're developing architectures that are doing really well. They're getting bought out by Nvidia for $40 billion and they're having record, record sales. It just doesn't matter because they're not allowed to hire anybody until Nvidia does the full takeover. And that's gonna be expected to complete in April, 2022. But they're also not only just canceling all of these hirings that you can't backfill any positions in case anybody actually leaves, but also they are getting rid of their well-being allowances, which in the UK was 4,500 pounds per person, and in the US was $8,500. And the well-being allowance was for activities that support you and your family's health or financial well-being and any activities that allow you to learn something new, which sounds incredible, but you know, when they're making a ton of cash, when they're getting bought out for a record amount, and the company, the new overlord wants to come in and take things over, you say, hey, listen, you either leave right now or we're not gonna pay you as much as we paid you last year because we, we gotta conserve money now, okay? All right, we're gonna get the bonuses because we're the executives, okay? We get the we get the golden parachute out the window, but you, you, you wanna learn how to play guitar with your kid? No, all right, you get no well-being allowance. We want you bad being. In case you want to talk to Lisa Sue about ARM, she's not quite concerned. In an interview that came out with JP Morgan with AMD's CEO, she essentially said, hey, you know what? We're not too worried about ARM because it's not necessarily about ARM versus x86. It's about, do you have the right compute at the right performance point, the right price point with the right features and functions? And that if they need stuff like ARM in data center, we could potentially work with companies on like that. But from AMD's standpoint, we consider ourselves sort of the high performance computing solution working with our customers. And that is certainly the way we look at this. And if it means ARM for certain customers, we would certainly consider something in that realm as well. But we look at it as really, let's talk about what problem you're trying to solve and then we'll work with you with the best components to address the customer's needs. Lisa Sue essentially is the same. Bring on the competition, all right? We could take on ARM, we could take on NVIDIA, we could take on Intel, we've already been doing it, okay? You want you want me to kowtow to their just goodness? Not happening, okay? We can build it stronger, better, faster than them. Just accept it. And you should accept that Intel might be getting back on the train. We talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News how they're producing seven nanometer chips. Finally back on it. Go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News right there. See you tomorrow, my friends. Cheers.